In the early days of the church, not only were Christians subjected to persecutions, tortures, and martyrdom, but culturally, they were also subject to ridicule and mockery, especially when it came to the sacred rites and practices of Christians, even making it onto the stage. As St. Gregory the Theologian relates in his second oration, Sinners are planning upon our backs, and when we devise against each other, they turn against us all, and we have become a new spectacle, not to angels and men, as says Paul, that bravest of athletes, in his contest with principalities and powers, but to almost all wicked men, and at every time and place, in the public squares, at carousels, at festivities, at times of sorrow. Nay, we have already, I can scarcely speak of it without tears, been represented on the stage, amid the laughter of the most licentious and the most popular of all dialogues and scenes, is the caricature of a Christian. And yet, Theodoret of Cyrus accounts in his remedy for the diseases of the Greeks, says, I heard that some, fed from the stage, were suddenly ranked among the martyrs and became worthy of victory, receiving crowns after public confession, drove away the demons to which they were subject to before. God is not mocked, St. Paul says in the epistle to the Galatians. God either punishes the mockers in order to correct them, or he converts them into that which they had mocked. In the days of public mockery, God chose three such men, professionals on the stage, to which he made examples and witnesses before their audience. Glossios, the comedian of Heliopolis. Glossios, also known as Genesius, was born in Mariamne, a village near Damascus, and was the imperial second mime, that is the actor who played secondary roles, usually clownish ones, in small theatrical performances of a comedic nature. He was a part of a company of actors at Heliopolis during the reign of the Emperor Diocletian. In a comedy meant to ridicule the ceremonies of the Christians, Galatius studied for the role by enrolling as a catechumen in a local Christian community. Welcomed into the community, he learned of the details of the mystery of baptism and other rites from certain friends who zealously professed the religion. He would play the neophyte in a show parroting the rite of holy baptism. On the stage, the comedian played as a man near death, sick with an illness, calling out for the need to be baptized. Ah, my friends, I find a great weight upon me and would gladly be eased. The others answered, What shall we do to give thee ease? Wouldst thou have us lift thee up to make thee lighter? Ye senseless creatures, he said, I am resolved to die a Christian, that God may receive me on this day of my death as one who seeks his salvation by flying from idolatry and superstition. The performance continued in a ridiculous manner as two mimes, one dressed as a priest and the other as an exorcist, arrived and sat by his bedside. Well, my child, why did you send to us? Because I desire to receive the grace of Jesus Christ and to be born again, that I may be delivered from my sins. At that moment, the actors pulled him from his bed and tossed him into a great tub from the bathhouse, full of warm water to the uproarious laughter of the audience. The faux priest exclaimed and evoked the name of the Trinity as Galatius was repeatedly dunked under the water to the amusement of the crowd. Yet amid the laughter and cacophony, something changed in the comedian. Emerging from the water, he saw the hand of God and several angels circle around him, holding a great book and reciting all the sins since childhood listed therein. The angels then took the mighty book and plunged it into the waters from which he had emerged, and then showed him the book again, now whiter than snow, washed away clean in the font from the bathhouse. Now dressed in the white robe of the newly baptized, Galatius declared to the audience, I am a Christian. While I submerged in the bath, I saw such a burst of awesome glory as to fill me with terror, and now I am ready to die as a Christian. The crowd continued laughing, not knowing he was no longer performing his role in jest, and he continued to exhort them all to join him in holy baptism for the forgiveness of their sins. Delving into a sermon, the audience soon began to realize that he was no longer preaching in jest, and they began to be filled with rage. Throwing themselves onto the stage, the crowd dragged the neophyte out of the theater in his white robe, where he was stoned. 
the white robe now stained red with the martyr's blood. The local Christians took his body back to his own country, where a church was built over his tomb. Christ showed the power of his mercy and grace, who called the publican to be an apostle, and honored this saint with martyrdom, the saint drawn from the stage the most infamous school of passion and vice. Intending to incite laughter through illumination, you laughed at error. Having been washed, Glossius is stoned. St. Ardalian, the Actor St. Ardalian was an actor-comedian during the persecutions of the Emperor Maximian. The actor played in pagan theaters for the entertainment of the crowds, making fun of Christians in every way, parroting Christian ceremonies and mocking the martyrs by eagerly playing them failing to resist the edicts of the government. However, amidst the real persecutions taking place and his mimicry of the martyrs, he was touched by grace and moved by the resilience of those willing to die for the faith. In secret, he sought to become a Christian himself, and was then received into the church. When another persecution broke out, he decided to write another play, in which he would play, act as a Christian martyr again, who would at first refuse to offer sacrifice to the idols, but later renounce Christ. However, known only to him, he resolved to confess his faith before the crowds at the time he was supposed to relent. Playing the Christian again, both in spirit and on the stage, at the circus he was suspended and hanged upon a wooden gibbet, and was mockingly torn at with hooks. Expertly depicting the suffering, the audience applauded the realism of the mock torture, and delightfully cheered in praise of his craft. At this moment, he ordered the crowds to be silent, and declared in a loud and clear voice that he believed in Christ, truly, and not in parody, and that he would not renounce the Lord. As the crowd began to stir at his insistence that this was not a jest, the magistrate in attendance, a fan of the actor, attempted to assure the audience that Ardalian was continuing to play and roll, and at the end of the show he would renounce Christ and offer sacrifice to the gods. However, the saint continued to confess his faith in Christ until the magistrate demanded that he retract his declaration if he wanted his life to be spared, but Ardalian persisted in his confession of Christ as the true God. The official then ordered that the actor be tied to a red-hot framework of rods and cast into the pyre. After his suffering, the actor who had played the part of a Christian renouncing Christ earned the crown of martyrdom, being burned alive for his faith. Now Ardalian, the mime of old, mimics the martyrs, enduring the flame. Porphyrios, the Mime St. Porphyrios was a mime during the reign of Julian the Apostate, and during the course of his birthday celebration, the emperor attracted performers of all sorts, each attempting to curry imperial favor. Porphyrios was asked to perform for the emperor, with a suggested theme of mockery of the Christian faith that would no doubt win his affection. Not knowing anything of the faith, he inquired into its rites and chose the mystery of baptism to lampoon, seeming foreign enough to paganism that would be easiest to ridicule. The theater erupted in laughter at each of the acts mocking the hated Christians, chortling preceding each performance in anticipation, as each actor and mime attempted to outdo one another in gestures and posturing with loud pronouncements. With Porphyrius as the final act, he was to leave the crowd breathless in his jest of the small community's odd customs and rites. Reciting a form of the baptismal liturgy, with added crude remarks to provoke laughter, the mime stood before the emperor with a tub of water and immersed himself. The servant of God, Porphyrios, is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, he cried as he emerged and submerged back again. Coming up from the water, the mimic of sacred rites spoke genuinely, the words imparting true grace as he confessed, Now I'm a Christian. The audience laughed at the ridiculousness as he donned a white garment, but Porphyrios found himself transfixed. A great serenity overcame him, and a bright light only he could see appeared, with a voice emanating that he had truly been baptized, no longer seeking to serve the earthly emperor, but the heavenly king instead. The mime fell to his knees and thanked God for his deliverance from darkness, turning to Julian and exclaiming that he would now serve Jesus Christ as Lord, having received the truth. The emperor, himself having forsaken his own baptism, 
did not yet realize what had occurred to the mime, and was not amused at the new performance. The other clowns and actors bade Porphyrios to get back on script, but seeing the serene look on his face as he continued to preach the gospel, they quickly left, not wanting to be associated with the man who turned a mockery of Christianity into a mockery of paganism. Julian demanded an answer from the jester, only to be met with greater praises of Christ, which infuriated the emperor which had prior found him funny. Still in the theater, Julian ordered Porphyrios to be immediately removed and beheaded, and thus the mime ended his act as a martyr, the clown of a king to the servant of the Lord. Persuaded to mock baptism, you mock error. Being cleansed, Porphyrios was beheaded by the sword. And thus here are three lives of saints who unexpectedly became martyrs for the very faith they sought to mock, even going through the motions insincerely can soften a heart to the grace of God. Ardalion being moved by the courage of the martyrs he mimicked, and Galosios and Porphyrios discovering the true effects of the grace of baptism. For us, this should demonstrate just how unequal our cooperation with God's grace is, when even three pagans are unexpectedly transformed through mere mimicry of the mysteries of God. We should remember that when we feel empty, or that we're simply going through the motions when it comes to prayer, or reading the scripture, or attending church, or whatever act of faith, that although we should strive to be sincere, we should still continue these acts even if it feels like we're just going through the motion, as God's grace still acts even if we do not perceive it. St. Ambrose of Optina once said, If you find there is no love in you, but you want to have it, then do deeds of love, even though you do them without love in the beginning. The Lord will see your desire and striving, and will put love in your heart. Sometimes we must go through what we may feel are empty acts before God inspires that true love and sincerity within us. And on the contrary as well, as Christians we should strive to align our words and actions with our true heart. For again, God is not mocked, and if we engage in unchristian-like behavior, our hearts may soon follow those words and actions, the opposite of what occurred with these actor saints. We can't allow ourselves to be two-faced, but one whole person as eventually our words, deeds, and heart will be aligned, one way or the other, just as God moved on the hearts of those actors to align with their own words and deeds. As St. Gabriel Ivan Moretti said, No matter who you are, what kind of work you do, give an account of yourself as to how you have performed your work, as a Christian or as a heathen, that is, motivated by self-love and worldly pleasure. A Christian must remember that every deed, even the smallest, as a moral principle. A Christian who remembers the teachings of Jesus Christ should perform every deed so that it will be of use toward the spreading of the grace of God and the kingdom of heaven among men. Amen.